You know, I was pretty intrigued the first time that I ever saw this process being done, and then I had a lot of questions, and so did you for that matter. What is this cold welding thing? Is this a legitimately new welding process? Because every time I research this, it all leads back to China. Have they created something new? Or is this just somebody clicking a switch? Perhaps it's the answer as to how they make all those eBay exhausts look kind of like this. And maybe also the answer as to why they fail so often. But we'll see. What exactly is cold welding? Well, to really answer this, I just went out and bought the machine. As far as this machine goes, we'll explain what makes it a cold welder, but I'm going to leave out things like the brand and the company and stuff like that for two reasons. The first reason is that it's only been here for four days at the time of shooting this video, and that's not enough time to say whether a 430 some odd dollar machine from AliExpress is actually worth a crap. The second reason is because the word copyright doesn't seem to translate well into Chinese, or at least they don't seem to understand what that means. I have to spend a lot of time throughout my week getting unauthorized videos removed from advertisements of cheap Chinese products that we definitely don't endorse, so I'm not going to put my face next to a brand that I know nothing about. But don't be surprised if they actually, let's say, steal this pose, or maybe even this one. And if that's the case, do me a huge favor, kick me a link so that way I can get that taken down too. So is this a TIG welder? I mean, it has everything that just about every other TIG welder has, right? Has a torch, has a ground clamp, uses tungsten, DC output, 250 amps. But usually when you see videos or comparisons of cold welding to TIG welding, they try to tell you that they're not one and the same. But this is a TIG welder. If you stick it into TIG mode and you push the trigger, it welds exactly like a TIG because it is a DC TIG welder. Now that trigger is how we control everything. As soon as you push down, high frequency start goes, arc starts, then it's off from there. It just depends on which mode you've selected. So if you're in the cold weld mode, it's going to work a little bit differently than it was in regular TIG mode. There are two technical definitions to the term cold welding. The first one is a bit of a scientific definition. So basically saying that a cold weld is a weld that was created without fusion or bringing any of the metals to a molten state. Basically saying that a big machine came in there, smashed two pieces together and voila, cold weld. So if that's the definition that we're working off of, that means that this nut that's glowing red hot and the stainless filler that was used to fill it all in there, which had to be melted to fuse all this together, that would technically not make it a cold weld, right? Now the second term is an industry term or kind of a saying that we use. When a weld is cold, it's a weld that lacks fusion or penetration, meaning that you didn't have enough oomph to really get through it. So if we take these two pieces of pipe right here and blast them together, you notice right off the get-go that there was a molten weld pool. That technically makes it not a cold welder, but when you see the result and take a look at the inside here, 
There's like no penetration whatsoever. That would definitely make it a cold weld, which means this is extremely prone to failure. So technically that is a cold weld, I think. So this machine is being advertised as a cold welder and it has like a cold welding mode. But is that just some trickery for like a pulsing circuit or something? Well, take a look at the difference between the actual pulse circuit and the cold pulse circuit. There's a big difference between the two of them. On normal pulse circuit or pulse mode, the arc strikes, then it goes up to its peak amperage, then it goes down to a low amperage or what we call a background amperage. And then it goes back up and back down again. All of that stuff is programmable for the most part. That's what we tell the machine that we want to do. So if we run that against the cold welding mode, notice that the arc terminates. It shuts off completely instead of going up to the peak amperage and then back down to the background amperage. That's the biggest difference here. On a regular pulse circuit, the arc stays lit the entire time. It just jumps back and forth between two different levels of amperage. On a cold weld mode, it goes to the peak amperage and then shuts off. So this cold welder is basically nothing more than a fancy timer circuit that shuts the arc off. It's a spot timer. But what makes this spot timer so unique or so different than any other spot timer circuit that's on most machines is that this one works in milliseconds, as in very, very, very small fractions of a second. Now, realistically speaking here, if we're working in milliseconds or fractions of a second, we're not gonna get a whole lot of uh, power into two pieces of metal, right? So we have to offset it with a higher amount of amperage. Let's just take this titanium for example. Normally, this thickness would be welded about 40 to 42 amps with a constant arc. But in order to blast the two of them together, I had to weld it at 130 amps at 80 milliseconds. This eighth inch stainless butt weld that I'm sticking together right now is 250 amps at 100 milliseconds. Now the videos that they show you are just a little bit deceiving. They don't put a whole lot of information in there because what's so exciting about a spot welding circuit? So what they typically do is zoom way in so you can't see anybody clicking a switch, speed it up by about two or three times. Sometimes you'll see them dip in the tungsten, which they keep on welding with, which really doesn't make that weld any stronger because it's not really that strong to begin with. And then once they're done, they wave their hands over it and pretend to touch it and stuff like that. It kind of looks like this. The real time, on the other hand, to make that really shiny, colorless stainless is more like this. It's not very exciting. Now, very realistically here, I don't see a whole lot of use out of this machine. Now, I've seen what they advertise it to be, but, you know, it's not really anything that a normal TIG welder couldn't do. But I will give a lot of credit that this thing is a lot of fun. And for 430 some odd dollars, you know, it's pretty cheap entertainment, especially for the welding world. But this process as a whole, this cold welding is not really what it's cracked up to be because at the end of the day the result is a weld that is cold or not structurally sound so that's not really a good thing i do see it useful for tacking up small parts uh, maybe even the spring kits for exhaust components and stuff like that but that's also again nothing that a regular tig weld couldn't do so why would you spend extra money just for tack welding it doesn't make a whole lot of financial sense to me, but again, this is pretty cool. It's novel, but there's also a reason why all of it leads back to China and they're trying to push it as something that, well, doesn't really exist. And just one more thing while I'm here. There's something else that you see in those other cold welding videos, and that's lack of a helmet or eye protection. That means your eyes will burn. In this video, I wasn't wearing gloves, but that was just for the sake of being funny. There's nothing funny or cold about liquid molten metal. So don't be a dumbass. Put your freaking PPE on. And I guess if you want to see or know more about this cold welding thing or watch me do something kind of silly with it, like more razor blades or throw a challenge out there, something like that, you know, drop them in the comments. Let me know. Thanks for watching.